So the IB budgets two hours for this. I'm gonna see what I can do in eight minutes though. Now the IB is only gonna pick patterns that they've explained to you before. So for example, I'm gonna choose the boiling points now going down group one. And as you can see, the boiling points decrease as the group descends. So the metallic bonds must be getting weaker as the group descends. Metallic bonds, positive metal ions in a sea of electrons. So if I sketch out a little version of lithium at the top and sodium at the bottom, you can see that sodium ions have a lower charge density. Their plus one charge is spread out over a larger area and therefore they have a lower charge density and they're just not that attracted to the sea of electrons. The electrostatic charge difference isn't as great and the bond isn't as strong. They're not that attracted. That plus is kind of diluted, if you will. Looking at the melting points, they increase as we go across period three. Well, for the metals, we're not going to go any further than the metals. Aluminium having the highest melting point. Well, if I sketch out again, sodium and then magnesium ions, two plus and aluminium ions, three plus. You can see that aluminium has more electrons in the C and the iron is smaller and has a higher charge. So this gives a much bigger electrostatic attraction. So a much stronger metallic bond. More electrons in the C and a higher charge density for aluminium. After all, the aluminium is very small and with the highest charge, a very high charge density. This again is from the data booklet, copyright IB. Uh, these are the alkanes and you can see that methane is the easiest to vaporize. It's the most volatile, if you will. Hey, it's already a gas. It's already turned into a gas, uh, vaporized. A volatile chemical turns into a gas easily. And hexane is the hardest to vaporize. Well, you can't really say hardest and easiest. That's anthropomorphizing it. So you could say it's the most energy needed to vaporize it. Now, the intermolecular forces in the alkanes are highest in hexane and lowest in methane. And that actual intermolecular force is van der Waals forces, or London dispersion forces, if you will. And simply, more electrons means more van der Waals. There are no other intermolecular forces of any importance in the alkanes. Let's look at chloroethane and bromoethane. Now, chloroethane seems to be a gas, and bromoethane is a liquid. So chloroethane is more volatile, but uh, so why is bromoethane a liquid? It's got more electrons, it's got more van der Waals, it's got more intermolecular forces that have to be broken, and so the bromine is more likely to be the liquid or even the solid chemical when compared to the chlorine, for example, or the fluorine-based chemical. And the astatine, well, that's the lowest halogen. Almost certainly, if, if that exists, it's going to be a solid. Loads of electrons, loads of van der Waals. Now you could argue that the dipole is also important here, but chlorine has the biggest dipole uh, in that molecule, and yet it has the lowest boiling point, it's a gas. And bromine has a smaller dipole, and yet that has the higher boiling point. So the dipole can't be as important as the van der Waals, which is unusual because normally van der Waals is the weakest. Moving on to some organic, there's pentane. Now, van der Waals is the bonding that we're looking at here, and the boiling points, well, the linear one has a higher boiling point. Now, that's strange because they've got the same formula, same number of electrons. You'd think they'd had the same van der Waals bonding, but there are two aspects to van der Waals bonding, not just the number of electrons, also the shape's important. Pentane is more like a sausage, and 2,2-dimethylpropane is more like a sphere. And in yellow, I've highlighted the overlap of these uh, molecules, van der Waals bonding. So the higher the surface area, the more van der Waals bonding, and the higher the boiling point. Now, how can you remember that, that the surface area is important? Well, just remember sticky sausage and non-sticky balls. That will probably stick in your head. Moving on, we have the old favorite ethanol and its isomer, well, whatever that ether's called. You don't need to know the names of ethers. So which one has the highest boiling point? Well, I'll tell you that ethanol is less volatile 
and the ether is more volatile, more willing to turn to a gas. And the reason why ethanol doesn't want to turn into a gas is it has hydrogen bonds, which are a special sort of dipole. They're special because they're stronger. And the ether just has dipole-dipole intermolecular bonding. And that's weaker. So it has a lower boiling or melting point. There's sodium chloride in three different ways that you'll encounter it. FMCP, just remember that, FMCP. What the hell's that? I'll tell you in a second. FMCP, it's going to conduct electricity. If it has freely moving charged particles, it will conduct electricity. So solid sodium chloride, no, I'm sorry, they're not freely moving. But they are charged particles, it won't conduct electricity. Solid sodium chloride. Liquid or melted sodium chloride, uh, yeah, that's got freely moving charged particles. It's a liquid, they're sloshing around, ions are charged, fantastic. That's a conductor. An aqueous sodium chloride, yeah, that will also conduct electricity. Because in the water, the ions are becoming freely moving and they're charged particles. The mantra of like dissolves like, polar things dissolve in polar things, and non-polar things dissolve in non-polar things. So we've got methane, methanol, and difluoromethane. So which is the odd one out? Which won't dissolve in the other, others? So which is insoluble? Actually, that's the question. What's insoluble in water? And water's polar. So which is insoluble in water? Well, methane's non-polar, so that's the answer. But uh, methanol, that's polar. It has hydrogen bonds coming out of the alcohol. And that's a little tricky. It looks like these dipoles cancel on difluoromethane. It looks like that that's non-polar. But that's wrong. You're looking at that in two dimensions. And in two dimensions, it is non-polar. But I have to draw it out in 3D for you to see why it's actually polar. So using the accepted 3D uh, diagram style, you can see that those two fluorines are on one side of the molecule. However you put them, they're always on one side of the molecule. And then there'll be a dipole. So it's going to be polar. So which is insoluble in water? It's the non-polar one, which is methane. That's why when you break wind in the bath, the bubbles don't dissolve. Well, that was rather unpleasant. And once again, ethanol and... Ooh, that's ethanthiol. Ooh, now that's got more van der Waals bonding because sulfur has more electrons than oxygen. But hydrogen bonding, that's a special sort of dipole. It's special because it's uh, strong. So the boiling points are, or in Kelvin this time, oh, you can see. Yeah, the alcohol has a higher boiling point. Even though the other one has more van der Waals, van der Waals is weaker. So just to recap, the bond strengths, ionic, metallic, and covalent are all about the same strength, the strongest. Hydrogen bonds are next, which is stronger than dipole, dipole, and then van der Waal. There are a few exceptions, but not to worry too much about.